justified I'm sanctified I have been called out to his life I'm born again I'm not the same I have been called out from the Into his marvelous light I have won the fight The old is gone Into the kingdom of God Living for Jesus I am called out I'm called out God. We've Praise been called God. out of darkness into His marvelous light. That's right. Praise God for another good opportunity to encourage you with the Word of God and believe that you will be blessed today because God's Word always lifts us up. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. That was Amen. a wonderful song. Yeah. Talking so much about, of life in yeah. it. Yeah. We've been called out of darkness into God's marvelous light. You know, as believers, we are picked, handpicked by God, the creator of this universe. To be called out means to be separate and to be chosen by God for a very specific purpose mm. that He has called us to live out. That's right. 
Being called out means you have come out of another kingdom mm. into a new kingdom. Yeah. And that's what we've been talking about all this time. We've been talking a lot of things about being in Christ, knowing who you are now once you've received Jesus in your heart. And knowing that God, once He came into your heart, He's not going to leave you. Mm. He's not going to just let you live life on your own yeah. unless you want to. He wants to be a part of your life. Yeah. And the best part about it is that He doesn't control us. He leads yeah. us gently. That's right. So the song that we were singing comes from the scripture in Colossians chapter 1, verse 13. You know, I love the truths that say, you know, many times in the scriptures, the word in Christ is mentioned. And God wants you to see yourself in Him. He mm. wants you to have a new self-image. Not an image that you used to know, but something you may have to develop. But He wants to uh, change your image of seeing yourself completely. Mm. First of all, let's see Colossians 1.13. And in this episode, we want to talk a lot about um, what kind of a person you are and specifically about how much of authority and power you've received as a child of God. Let's read this verse, Colossians 1.13. It says, Who has delivered us, who is Jesus, has delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of His dear Son. So you notice it says, he, You have come out of one kingdom into another. Mm. Right? Before we knew the Lord, we were in a place of darkness. Right? And mm. darkness is referring to everything that is under control and misery and specifically it refers to misery. That was the, that was the kind of um, life that we used to live mm. in darkness. But when you received Jesus, something big actually happened in your life. You came out of the power of darkness. Yeah. You were under the control of the enemy mm. and God brought you into the kingdom of His dear Son. Yeah. Another scripture tells us that the kingdom of light is what He has brought us into. Right? Mm. God has brought us out of darkness into His marvelous light. Yeah. That's quite a big work that God has done. That is. Right? To bring us out of one kingdom into another kingdom. Mm. Right? And you know what the best part about it is? In the kingdom of light that you have received, it's not a controlling kind of a kingdom. Right? Mm. In this new kingdom that you are in, you have a new master, a new Lord. And His name is Jesus. Yeah. He wants to be your king right now once you've come into this new kingdom of light. Before you came to know Jesus, like we said earlier, you were bound by Satan, mm. right? You, you might wonder, why, why do I always want to do the things that I do which are wrong? Or why do I always I do this mess? I'm trying to control myself, but I, I just can't stop it. Well, that's because your nature is different. Your mm. nature was under the control of the enemy. Yeah. And you were not thinking about God at all during this time. Mm. But when you come into Jesus, when you come into this new kingdom of light, you see one great thing that happens to you is you are able to have authority over all those things that were controlling you before. Yeah. Right? And it's two different mm. kingdoms. Yeah. So the rules and the, more than rules, it's just that the, it's going to be a change. Mm. Like, you know, as um, human beings, as people, you know, we have the ability to speak and to listen to and to watch. And so being in the kingdom of darkness, sometimes you, you tend to just, you know, look at certain things in a certain way or talk a certain way just because you have been naturally, that has been in you since from the time that you mm. grew up. And the Bible talks about we were born into this world as sinners and sinners uh, because we were sinners, we do the things that you know sin sinners do. But Jesus, He bought us with His precious blood to redeem us from the power and the authority of Satan, and He made us righteous people. To be righteous, like again, is to be having a right relationship with God. That's simply what it means. Mm. So we're no longer sinners and we're righteous people. And we've also come out of the kingdom of darkness into God's kingdom, which refers to from one dominion into another yeah. dominion. One dominion so, to another. So like I said, the words and the things we have been used to, now we need to change. And it all starts also with our mind. That's right. We need to change the way we think yeah. and reprogram our minds. And you know, another thing that, you know, as I was thinking about this statement, when it says you've come out of the kingdom of darkness, right? And like we said earlier, there were things that were controlling you, like fear and sickness and yeah. worry and all those things. 
when you come into this new kingdom of light, which is, which is Jesus, who is the head of it, you receive an authority, right? So which means you have authority over fear, over sickness, over you know addictions. Probably yeah. maybe addictions is something that you're struggling with maybe. And maybe you, you struggle with a lot of things, right? But God wants you to know today that when you have come into His kingdom, you have received an authority. Mm -hmm. I like to call it, you, you are a powerful person now. Yeah. That's what you are. Yeah, right. A powerful person to use your authority. Right? See, so this is what Jesus said in Luke 10, 19. This is the kind of person that you are. When you realize that you are a powerful person, man, you are going to start rising up against all these little things like fear and worry, anxiety. You're going to say, man, I have authority over them. They don't have yeah. to control me any longer. Mm. See, that's what Luke 10, 19 says. <clears throat> Jesus says, Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Mm. So Jesus says, I have given you power, which means also he has given you an authority, yeah. right? So how do I use my authority? As you read the scriptures, let's uh, take Jesus' example, right? When he, when he saw people were sick and were possessed with demons, he used his authority, yeah. right? He hated to see them in that state. Yeah. The way he did it was, right, he approached them and said, in the name, or he didn't use his name rather, because he was the name Jesus, but he yeah. said, get out, right? Yeah. Out you go. And we have received the name We have received the name. Yeah, yeah, he is the name of Jesus. So yeah. he was able to use his authority. Mm. And the best part about it is, it's not only for Jesus, that authority is also for you. Yeah. Next, and anytime you're facing um, situations of fear and it's controlling mm. your life, yeah. begin to stand up and say, if I'm born again and I've received Jesus, I have come out of the kingdom of darkness, yeah. I have received an authority, then why in the world am I trying to let fear control me? Yeah. So you rise up and you use your authority and say, in Jesus' name, I command fear to get out. Yeah. You have no right over my life. Yeah. And I'm even reminded of um, the story when Jesus was in the boat with his disciples mm. and there was a storm that was raging and winds were blowing and you know they were headed to the other side of the sea but um, all, along the way the storm comes and so Jesus is fast asleep in the boat and the disciples are so panicking and they're worried you know we're gonna sink we're mm. gonna drown in the middle of this storm but they wake Jesus up and then Jesus uses his authority mm. and he says I command you winds and storm to cease peace be still that's right he uses his authority and so this is what we're talking about when you come into the kingdom of light you come into god's kingdom you receive power and authority see when we were in the world we l allowed circumstances and things around us to dominate and control us but we don't have to do that anymore no. and we have control over the enemy we have power in fact he's Satan is very very small when you go to see and mm. if jesus gave us power and authority over him we have power and authority. That's right. In the book of Revelations also, it talks about Satan in, and talks about him in a very small way. And he, is he the one who deceived the nations? Mm. In other words, he's talking about Satan having very little authority and us being greater people than the devil. Yeah, that's So that's we good. can even use our authority and change situations around us. Say if you're facing in your body a sickness that symptoms are trying to come and attack your body, Jesus has given his promise that on the cross, he took away all your sickness and diseases and he paid the price for your sickness. Mm -hmm. So when those symptoms and those attacks come into your body, you say, my body is made the temple of the Holy Spirit. God dwells in me and I'm not gonna accept this sickness That's and this right. disease. I have authority. I can use my authority. I am healed by the stripes of Jesus. Yeah. So for example, like uh, Shalom was saying about if you're facing sickness and you don't know, you the only thing that you know how to do is just to be, let that sickness dominate and control you. As a child of God, stand up and use your authority. Mm. Or maybe and somebody else can yeah. use it for you. 
and stand with you, right? Yeah, and in talking about circumstances of sickness, you know, I have even experienced this in my own life. Sometimes we tend to, um, you know, talk about it and say, well, this sickness always comes. I get it all the time mm. and I'm going to stay sick like this for, for another three, four weeks. You expect or, the bad. You expect the bad. Yeah. And the thing is, I want to point out, we always talk what we feel. Mm. But in this new kingdom, Jesus has given us new words to speak. So instead of saying, I get sick all the time, well, that may be the reality that you are facing and what you are feeling. But instead of saying that, talk what the Word says. Mm. Talk what the Word says. Say what Jesus said. He paid for our healing. So I can say, according to Isaiah 53 and according to 1 Peter 2, you can read these at home. It says, by Jesus stripes, I am healed. Mm. That's a very basic and simple declaration you can make, but it's powerful. It is. Our words are very powerful. It is very powerful. I am healed Amen. by the stripes of Jesus. That's right. And that is actually a reality yeah. um, when you know that you can use your and authority. If the death fill side of the words can you know, affect your body, like constantly saying, speaking death filled words, if it can affect you, just imagine how much more powerful speaking life-filled words from God's Word. Yeah, in, in fact, you know, the Bible tells us that death and life are in the power of the tongue, yeah. right? In your words, there is either death in it or there is either life in it, right? Death-filled yeah. words is everything contrary to the good that God has for you, yeah. right? Like, for example, death-filled words mean, like, I always get sick all the time. I'm always afraid of this situation mm. and I'm not special and I don't, I don't know if I can ever overcome this. You know, yeah. I'm going to be this way the rest of my life. That's speaking death out of your mouth. And mm -hmm. that's going to actually cause those words to become a reality, become real in your life, right? Mm -hmm. You're going to be that way as you have spoken. But mm. there's good news. Even if you've spoken like that and lived your life, you can change your words. Yeah. Because when you change your words, you can change your life, yeah. right? And you can start speaking life. If you've been speaking words like, I'm always getting sick all the time, say no. In Jesus' name, Jesus bore my sickness in his body on the tree right. so that I might be healed by his stripes. Yeah. We've got to take use of the authority that God's yeah. given us, right? Maybe if it's a fear that you're struggling with and fear is so dominant in your life. Remember, fear is a spirit, mm. right? It's a spirit that controls a person. But realize that you have come out of the kingdom of darkness the kingdom of darkness, there was all kinds of fear. But God has brought you out of that kingdom into the kingdom of His dear Son mm. and given you an authority. Yeah. So you have authority over fear. Right. Yeah. And another good example is walking in the love of God. Mm. You know, when we are always tempted and we feel like, you know, um, of just flaring up and giving up when, when people say things against us. Mm. When people call you, you're a loser, you're a nobody. Maybe you're at school and you hear these words all the time. You're naughty, you'll never make it. Mm. Or you're a failure, you're going to fail this test. When you hear words like that, you say, no, that's not what Jesus has told me. Yeah. In the word, Jesus has said, I will never fail you nor forsake you. Mm. And so these may be new truths to you, but I guarantee these stuff work because Jesus guaranteed it in the Bible. And we have also experienced these in our lives and it works in it us. Does. Yeah. And so instead of saying what other people say and accepting what other people say, you can use this weapon in um, Isaiah. I was just reminded of this. It's a weapon. God's word is a weapon. God's word is a sword. It is. And it's sharp. In Isaiah 54, Verse 17, it says, No weapon that is formed against me shall prosper, and every tongue that shall rise against me in judgment I shall condemn. And this is my heritage as a servant of the Lord, and so on. So the first part and the middle part, no weapon that is formed against me. See, words can be like weapons shooting at against you. What people say Sometimes it may, you know, bring sometimes hurt mm. and sometimes you may feel sad about it. But this says, no weapon that is formed against me shall prosper. And every tongue that shall rise against me, I condemn it. So you can say in simple terms, I break the power of those words that are spoken against me. You have when the authority. You that. have the authority. Mm. When people speak bad words against you, don't accept it. And don't just say, well... That's what people say, so maybe that's me. 
Mm. You can condemn those words. I break the power of those words. Like we said, words are powerful. Yeah. So you need to bind Definitely. those powers and say, you know, replace those with the word of God. That's the thought. I'm not a failure. Mm. I'm a king. I'm a child of God. Yeah. What yeah. you're doing is you're building a new image on the inside of you. Right. When you start talking words like that, when you start mm. seeing yourself special. Yeah. And maybe you're struggling with your identity. You know, everybody's throwing an identity out at us, right? Yeah. Telling us we need to be like this, we need to be like that. But do you know that God has given you an identity, right? In 1 Peter 2, 9, He tells us who we are right now, mm. right? I think there are many who struggle with identity, trying to be somebody, trying to be like somebody else, yeah. or trying to be somebody they're not, mm. right? But you don't have to be like that. You can just be the person God made you to be. If, if, you know, if you struggle with that type of thing, this is what you can do. Use your authority against those thoughts when they come against you. Worthlessness and uh, f feeling bad about yourself. You can realize this is what God says about you. First Peter 2.9 says, But you are a chosen generation. Amen. You're chosen. God has chosen you. You might say, me? God's chosen me. Well, I'm not special. Yes, you are. Yeah. God has chosen you. Yes, he you says are. that here. Mm. And then he says, you are a royal priesthood. Wow. You are royal. In, you're in a kingly family once you've come into a new kingdom. Mm. So you're a king, right? A holy nation. In other words, God has made you a set new, apart. set apart, yeah. right? You don't have to be like others. That's what yeah. holy means. Yeah. And then it says that you are a different people to show forth God's praises who has Amen. called you out of darkness. That's into right. His marvelous light. Amen. So this is so amazing, these truths, when you go to see that God has chosen you. Yeah. I mean, there's so much of truth and value in these things. Mm -hmm. And we've been doing some declarations on who we are in Christ, and we want to do this confession. And while you do this, begin to believe that this is who you are yeah. right now. Right? God has chosen you, even as we read. Right? When thoughts of uh, identity and, you know, come into your mind, you're not worth it and stuff, say, no, God has chosen mm. me. It says in His Word in 1 Peter 2, 9. Yeah. So we want to agree with you and make these power promises. You can repeat right. these out and believe that this is the person that God has made you to be. Yeah. Let's say them out. Let's build a new image on the inside yeah. of us. Let's say, I'm a chosen generation. I'm a chosen generation. I have been called out. I have been called out. Out of darkness. Out of darkness. Into God's marvelous light. Into God's marvelous light. I am a new creature. I'm a new creature. In Christ. In Christ. I am the righteousness of God. I am the righteousness of God. In Christ. In Christ. I am alive to God. I'm alive to God. I have eternal life. I have eternal life. I am made near to God. I am made near to by God. By His blood. By His blood. I am raised up. I am raised up to sit with with Jesus to sit with Jesus God is my father God is my father I am a son of God I am a son of God Amen Amen so you can believe these truths today and uh, we like to hear your response and just tell us how the program has encouraged you we yeah. believe that it has been a blessing and realize that you can walk in this new identity seeing yourself in Jesus Amen